Psalm 121. Verse 1. I want to charge you up this morning briefly on the topic title. Even this is even the app weekend on what I tag app from above. Air from above. Psalm 121 verse 1 says, I will lift up my eyes unto the east. From whence comment my word? Verse 2. My help comment from the which made heaven and now can you please fling back to that verse 1 again? Pay attention. This was the psalmist talking. I will lift up my eyes on the east. From whence comment my help. Look at it. That will not permit us. Psalmist David. When he started, he said, He will lift up his eyes unto the east. Suddenly, he changed. So I discovered my help is not from the hill. He said, He will lift up his eyes unto the east. Believing that the help domiciled on the east. Suddenly, he had an inspiration and said, He, how will somebody say he will lift up his eyes? Why is he lifting up his eyes? And he now suddenly changed, he said, Then where will my hair come from? He will not come from where? No longer from the east. You see, in the Old Testament, divine instructions revelation and assistance is tied to a mountain to a hill because when Moses received the law it was from the from the from the mountain anytime God is expected to speak is that the children of Israel will be gathered down the hills and the Lord will roar from the mountain and we speak to them. So all the children of Israel agree up with the mindset that divine assistant is tied to a physical location. And that physical location is on a particular hill. A designated hill. But something occurred to the psalmist for the first time. He suddenly realized that God is not a God you can tie to a physical location. Because in the New Testament, God is his spirit. And as long as you are spiritual, you can come with him anywhere, anytime, any day. In the toilet, in the bedroom, inside your car. I'm praying for 10 of you that say the loudest amen today. Every area where you need help. As your amen go higher than that of your neighbor. Receive that app in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Brethren, no matter your status and connection, you still need help. I hear somebody saying, with all my connections, with all what I have, I don't need help. You are not correct, sir. You see that connection you are even talking about is even the support system that is making you to stand. Nothing in life is designed to be self-sufficient without a support system. If you doubt what I'm saying, without the help of this microphone, you won't hear my voice like the true of us. This microphone is a support system to my ministration. However, this microphone is also being assisted by certain equipment that you cannot even see with your eyes now. And there are people that are behind the oppression of those. Nothing in life 
is designed to be self-sufficient without a support system. One of the reasons why you are helpless in that area where you are helpless is that up to now you have not been able to identify the requisite support system. The day you are able to recognize or discover the requisite support system, what you call helplessness will just fizzle off. As powerful as a president is, you would think that he does not need help. He jetted out, I think it was yesterday. Did he pilot himself? Was he not someone who piloted that aircraft? That pilot is a support system to his movement from Nigeria to that country. The pilot itself also requires a support system of a sound aircraft. There can never be a pilot without an aircraft. Just as a pilot is a support system to the movement of the president from one point to another through the instrumentality of an aircraft, so also is the aircraft a support system to the effectiveness and the efficiency of the, of the pilot. The expertiness of the pilot is not enough to move the aircraft if the aircraft itself is not sound. It will be, it will be the grace. There your neighbor. Look for the required support system. And you will discover that what you call problem is not problem. The only person that is sufficient in all is God. However, do you even know that God even needs support system in achieving certain goals? There is nothing that will happen on head realm without the cooperation of the mortal entity. The Bible said the heavens of the heaven is of the Lord. The head he has given to the sons of men. Even though the head and the thing thereof belong to the Lord. But the Lord has given the head to men. Right here from Genesis chapter 1. And God said God bless him and God be fruitful. Multiply, subdue, dominate. Over the earth, he has given the head to men. There are certain things that will not happen on earth if God is unable to find a man that will ensure that his will find the expression among the modernity. God is looking for a man at every point in time that he will partner with to ensure that his will manifest. Holy Ghost has been given to us as our support system. As a believer, Roman 8 26, Roman 8 26 says, if we don't know how to pray, are you there? Where are those people? Romans 8 26. Likewise, the Spirit also help our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intersection for us with groaning which we cannot be uttered. The Holy Ghost is our support system that can make you to do what naturally you are not wired to do. But you see yourself doing those things just because you have relied on the Holy Ghost as a support system. I would have done it. Flew into Lagos on Friday. I had an all night before I, I could sleep yesterday morning. It was around 5.27 a.m. 5.37 a.m. And by 6 or 3, I was already awake for another meeting. By 9, after 9, I was already in another meeting that I finished around few minutes to 11. And yet, I came back again to worry and I'm standing here again. Sir, men and brethren, if the Holy Ghost is not your support system, your destiny will not only crash, it will fracture completely that you won't be able to stand any longer. You can't pray as expected without a total reliance on the Holy Ghost. 
The Holy Ghost is here at every point in time to help you. But do you require help from him? Things that he can help you to do. You feel that he doesn't know anything about the genealogy. Who told you? Years back, I was to write an exam, an, an exam, a very tough exam. After I have prepared very well in my own, the best I can do. I said, I must not join them at this exam and say I will come and write again. As I sat down, <laughs> and the Holy Ghost came. In the OBJ, he said, number one, B. I was no longer reading question. I was just ticking. I was just ticking. I'm telling you life experience. The result came out. People did not know the secret of my success. My support system did it for me. In my university days, the only God they bring and come. He will give me question. The only difference will be in the arrangement of the question, the numbering. To understand that there are two who are very close to me. I said, Pressy, go and read this. Go and read this. I won't tell them, but read, read you. And they will they will meet it like that in the exam. So one day one of them came to me, he said, Pastor, you told me I read that idea, and I made it like that. He said, I'm saying it was the Holy Ghost. From that moment, when is that time? He will ask me, Pastor. What is the Holy Ghost saying? Uh, what is the Holy Ghost saying? I said, well, the Holy Ghost has not spoken up to now. But when he speaks, there are times that a professor will be teaching us and the Holy Ghost will say, that is exam. Note that one. I will note it. So when my colleagues are reading all, uh, eh, I know why the question will come. So I will read. I will beat them hands down again. Let the Holy Ghost remain your support system that can reveal what your staffs are even planning against you and yet they are smiling with you. The Holy Ghost has the capacity to make not of you. I pray from today at any point in time where the enemy thought they will hold you down. The Holy Ghost will suffer for you in the name of Jesus. In Luke 8 24, Luke 8 24, there was a great storm. Imagine if Jesus was not in that ship with the disciples as their support system. The Bible says, What would have happened to them, church? They would have been all drawn. Remember when they were trying to help themselves, they were unable, they struggled. But somebody said, the crossing to the other side was never our idea. The man who instructed us to crawl the other side is still with us. Let's go and meet him. By the time they sought for divine support system, help came their way. From today, as you hand over that matter troubling you to the hand of the Holy Ghost, we did the next seven days. You will see a maximum turn around in the name of Jesus. Let me shock you. For you to know that life without support system is dangerous. How many of us have read about the story of Samson? How he used a jawbone of an ass to kill thousands. How many of us have read about when he was shot in and he walked straight to the gates? Unfortunately, I have been caged, not like Samson. I will do something about this another time. This man went at the gate of the city. Gate! Bible recorded that. He put his two arms. I'm trying to imagine the dimension of the gate. What increased this delay? The gate of the city cannot be this size. How did this hand extended to the right and to the left? 
And the Bible says he heard. He uprooted. He squeezed. Carry on his shoulder. And carry the thing. Walk up the hills. Mountain. With iron on his shoulder. When Shukura saw that he shook the city gate, squeeze it, carry it. And the Bible said they have laid siege for him. They saw the man uprooted the city gate, carry on his shoulder, did not drop it on the ground, carry the thing and climb a hill of several kilometers up. Everybody ran for their life and said, This one is dangerous. But let's shock you. He was not doing those things. He cast a lion, he turned lion with bare hands. But in Judges 16 20, give me Judges 16 20. Judges 16 20, everybody look. Delilah said, The Philistine be upon the Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as the other times before and shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. He lost contact with the, with the support system. Look at what happened. Verse 21. But the Philistine took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass and he did ground in the prison house. What a disastrous end. If God be for you as your support system, who can be against you? If you lose the support system of heaven, may you not end like Samson. You are not saying amen. amen. Sam, that business you are doing, if all the union gathered against you, if all the wishes gathered against you and said this place, you will not excel there. If God is with you, is there businesses that will shut down? You will keep breaking through and breaking forth. Because you have God on your side. But if that God is not with you. Ah. There is a Yoruba song that says. In that. Without Jesus. No other person. If God should leave you alone. You will not only be lonely. You will end in the lowest valley. We are no one will be able to take you out. Only the everlasting arm as a support system can pick somebody from the lowest part of the valley and we set the person on the hill to begin to sit with the priest and the king. I come to announce over 13 of you here today. I don't know that area where you have gone down there. I don't know where they are keeping your them there. I come to announce to you today that the hand of God is lifting you up. He's lifting you up. He's lifting you up. In the name of Jesus. Act 10 38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? And power thereafter was going about. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He was able to do that because how God anointed with Holy Ghost and power. Congress said, For God was with. Even Jesus called the Son need the support system of God the Father, which he did through the anointing of God the Holy Ghost. Jesus himself, as a God, 
when he came to this mortal realm, could not do anything until he received the support of his father. How do you know as Sam? Is there anybody here you are you are doing in, you are in a major business? Can I see another? You are in business. Is there anybody here? Can I see a witness? <laughs> okay. In that your business, eh? There are no occultic men, eh? So how occultic are you? Hello, how occultic are you? You see, let me tell you, life is in layers. For you to become player at any layers of life, you require a higher dimension of prayer. You can't be a player in the world of greatness, in the layer you are looking up. If you are not a man of higher prayer, you will be grounded, sir. How occultic are you? Why they are offering regular sacrifices on different altars, cons make a lot of consultations to fizzle you out. You, you are there, say, our father who are in heaven. Sir, by the time you will wake up, you know that the son I said, wake up. Hmm? You know that the son said, wake up. Wake up. You know that is the song. By the time you wake up, nothing will be awake. If they say they are occultic, eh, sir, I belong to the to the most powerful occultic world. Oh God of heaven. I I drink the blood twice in a month. Through the communion. If they say they are wish, my own wish, don't drink human blood because it's not sweet. I drink the blood of Jesus on regular basis through the instrumentality of the communion. So if it is blood for blood, the Bible says there is a better blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. That was a blood of a human. The Bible said that blood, she had a voice. But when the blood of Christ was shed, he silenced the voice of opposition. When the sinless and the guiltless blood of Jesus was shed, he silenced the voice. So if the voice of Abel is speaking good thing, the Bible said the blood of Christ speaks something much more better and more excellent. Sir, let me tell you. Wake up. Hmm? Wake up. If anybody threatens you, henceforth, their business and their lives will shut down in less than 72 hours. This is not brago. I don't know what to do, but I'm just telling you. My support system. Sit down, sir. I met one guy one day. The guy was was bragging. He said nobody can shoot me gun, and the gun penetrated. I said, I said, if, if you brag before me, if you brag again. I said, I will fire you and I will not put bullet and you will die. I will ask you to remove bullet from your gun. I will collect the same gun from your hand. You will, you will just be decaying and you will die. Uh, you know what they did the sham for you? There are some things they did not tell you. We thank God for Jesus. Before I gave my life to Christ, I'll be bad boy. Oh. Amen. Now mercy, now mercy God show us. Oh. Now, who saved me becoming a pastor? Leopard. That was my nickname then. Ah, 
I know they smile low. If I smile at you, I'm only looking out to. <laughs> Amen. Ha. Who said the God of the deep no good? If any man be in Christ, he said, Sir, don't let. There is no amount of sin that you have ever committed that cannot be forgiven. No. All you need is just confess and make a U-turn. Bible says in Proverbs 20 verse 30, Proverbs 20 verse 30 says, He that covered the sin shall not prosper. He that confess and renounce shall just what? Shall find mercy. First John 1, 7 to 9, First John 1, 7 to 9 says, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, no true in us. If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to do what? And cleanse us. Who say you cannot have a better life? God wants to use your that your bad story to produce good one. In fact, your mess is to constitute the message to the ages to come. The word message is mess plus age. That is the mess of the ages past for the present one. So that thing you call mess, God can transform, can turn them around. Stop living in the guilt of sin God has forgiven you. Stop condemning yourself and see that is, you have a better chance to become better thing in Christ. You have, you have. See what mercy has done for me today. A one-time smoker. A one-time smoker. Oh God, open this gate for me. Sir, ma, if I did not tell you that I was once a smoker, did I look like one? Mercy. Many of my colleagues were not privileged to see the light of the day. They went on a mission. And they never return. What will, what will I say? What did I give to God to make him to preserve me? We committed the same atrocity. He spears me. And they were not spared. Paraventure so that I can share my story with you today. For you to know that you see a better chance. My parents once disowned me because I was no longer giving them joy. I was disowned. I was disowned. Because I have given them more than enough trouble they can bear. They were no longer see anything joyful about my life. Even me myself, I knew that I was minus one. The devil I jacked my life. He ruled my life. He ruled my life. If parents have rejected the son, who else will accept the son? But Jesus stretched forth his arms of love. He transformed my life today. And now they call me pastor. I accepted his help, his support. When I mean I smoke, I'm not talking of weed. No. Weed get level. Like wale ho. Ah, he said, how did I know? Oh, mercy. It's mercy that is why when you smoke, to be peeling your lips. You see me do Sinner, they suffer. The, your, your leaves peeling. I don't need. Oh God. A rejected boy. Disowned boy. Today. 
I am one of the reasons why my father, I said, why my father is here alive. I celebrated his 90th birthday, November last year. In a big form for him, he looked at me. He prayed for me because he remembered this was the same boy he disowned years ago. My devil, I jacked my life. My devil ruined my life. I was so anointed by the devil that there is, if you are interested in any lady, either married or single, just tell me. I was an evangelist winning soul for the devil. You will not believe. I remember vividly one day. One day I remember vividly. A woman was on sick bed. A guy told me that because he's interested in that woman, a married woman. Okay, I said, give me the address. He gave me that night. I went straight. I met that woman where her husband was administering drug to her. And they were talking. I just got I just gave her contact. Make some sign. The man asked me, says, as you know. My devil is my devil is your coordinator. You are always coordinated in life. You will lie that. Oh God. You don't think twice. You know, there are pathological liars. I just said uh, I know the daughter. And I had her the, uh, the mother sick and the woman stood up from that sick bed. Life story. I took that woman from that place to the boy house for the boy to have sex with. Dev I was dangerously anointed by the devil. I was an evangelist for him. I was winning souls. No matter how strong, no matter how strong, no matter how strong a lady is, we will investigate you. We will peruse your life. We will find out your strength. We know, we know how to come in. It was a gift from the pit of hell. I was popular. It was a contract. They would give me the contract. Just, just mention the lady. I will get her. That I will not get her. No, no, no. He never passed. We had leopard ears. We would deliver. I was a dispatch rider to the devil. I was dispatch. Dis delivering good. I don't miss my target. I thought I was doing well. I thought I was living a good life. But mercy located me one day. That is why I can never condemn anybody. I knew how his mercy helped me. That's why I'm passionate about people. I'm passionate about the things of God. It was mercy. Now let me ask you, sir, do I qualify to be talking to you if you if you are God, if you are to be in place of God, sir? Will you give me chance with the atrocity I've committed? He said, go and kill him. This bad boy. How many of you have heard about Kamara's word? How many? Oh, you can't understand. Amen. Let's pause. Mercy. The devil deceived me, deceived me to a point that I signed an agreement that I will not go beyond the age of 30. I have bath with blood in order to acquire power. If you bow with a dirty water, how will your body look, my head? For you to bow with, come on, what kind of life is that? That was deception of the devil. I suffered. In this, my st stomach alone. I collected 250 incision marks 
standing on top of a casket lifting my hands up and for you to cut me once there are incantations that will make over and over over and over again on the third day I wanted to fresh water that was when I knew I was in trouble by the time I bent down the thing as much wall open like this you see flesh but see me today see what mercy has done for me as I'm about to round up I know that this message is to someone and I don't want to miss it let elders sit down come sir sir come sir come sir please sir come 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 Okay, no, sit down, sir. Sit down. I think this three should be enough. This is Elder God the Father. This is Jesus, God the Son. This is humanity. This is devil. Not that it's devil. God the Father said that the soul that sinned must die. And that the wages of sin is what? As humanity have sinned, does he deserve death? Yes. And God the Father is not ready to reverse himself. Because that is, that will be injustice. And the devil was already rejoicing. Because he has presented a weighty evidence to the father and this one said I am now guilty I am finished so he's already going and God the son said father since your requirement is that the soul that sin must die and that the wickedness of sin is dead and that your gift is what eternal life my father let me go in the place of this sinner the humanity Oh, yeah, come, sir. You come this way. Sir, you go this way. The father could not reject the offer. Because all he wants is that there must be payment for the sin committed. And the son that had no sin said, I will go in the place of humanity. I will now give my own life to humanity that have accepted my offer. The devil now became angry. This is what we call where you hear Bible say that say, and the righteousness of God was imputed on us. It was not what we work for. Anytime the father is now looking at this man who once was once a sinner. He sees the righteousness and the purity of the son in him. The implication of that one is this man henceforth does no longer have his own life. He's now living the life of whom? Of Christ. He can no longer do whatever he wants except what Christ wants because it was an exchange life given to him. You will now see mercy. Mercy now denies him what he deserves. And favor gave him what he did not deserve. What he deserved was what? Death. But mercy denies him that. And the other side of mercy called favor now gave him the gift of life. Is there anybody in this house? Who want to accept this gift of life? All eyes bow, all eyes close. You are here with this simple explanation. You just want to reconnect back to Christ. Raise up your right hand anywhere you are. I like to pray with you. You may be the only person. Raise it up anywhere you are. Anywhere you are, raise up. God bless you. God bless your son. Raise it. Raise it. 
is only you and God. Raise it. You can't leave this auditorium and God is say we know. Raise it. Raise it. God bless you. God, God bless you. God bless you. Don't let them shit you. No. As you raise those and tell him, Lord, show me mercy. Lift up those. Don't be telling him. I'm not calling you out, but raise. Just tell him, Lord, show me mercy. I am sorry today. Have mercy on me. I promise you that henceforth, I will live to please you. Thank you sir. I will live to please you. I will live to please you. In the name that above every other name, to those of you that have lifted your hands to connect back to your creator, let mercy speak for you in the place of judgment. In the name of Jesus! From today, no sin will control you. The consequences of sin are reversed and overturned for your sake. In the name of Jesus! Bring those hands down. Everybody just lay your right hand on your head. And I will pray with you. As I'm praying this prayer, those who went out yesterday for evangelism, they should step out. I pray for every one of you here today. Every area where you require support system, as your amen go higher, receive in the name of Jesus. Every area where you have been struggling from now, help shall come your way in the name of Jesus. With this encounter this morning, you will testify to divine assistance by the help of the Holy Ghost in the name of God the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. To every one of you who went out yesterday to win souls for the Lord, you will not be barren in any aspect of your life. You will be fruitful. You will never know shame. You will never see calamity. The power of God will rest upon you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. It shall be blessed this morning. Church, say a better amen.